Welcome back on this lovely Friday. It's not a lovely Friday. It's cold, but you know what? We're trying to be optimistic. Mike Apple, he's indoors, joining us live this morning. How are you, Mike? I've got no windows in my office, so I don't know. Uh, it's cold. Have you seen Frankie? Is he's it? bundled up. Yeah, it's in the single well, digits. I saw, I saw that he was. I saw that he was uh, layering already, but um, yeah, it's right. the layers down here. It's toasty, toasty warm in the basement, <laughs> so to speak. In the don't you still have a space heater down there? I do actually. Keep my feet warm. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> and my all wife good. comes down and says, "Why is it so hot in here?" And I'm like, "Cause I'm always cold." Yeah, those basements, they'll get you. Uh, uh, let's start off things with uh, retail <laughs> spending. We're expecting some numbers a little bit later on today. Yeah. Okay. So we had the retail market reopen from the pandemic, right? So the June numbers were record breaking from a percentage recovery, up close to 25 percent. And at the time, Stats Canada said. Well, retail spending is almost back up to where it was prior to the pandemic. And the July numbers are going to show continue, a continuation of the reopening of the economy. But is it a true representation, I guess, is the question that I'm asking this morning, Melanie, because, you know, we've got so many small and medium sized retailers still struggling. Let's face it, they can't have as many customers in the store at any given time. People aren't browsing like they used to. Um, you know, the retail uh, or the restaurant industry has been, you know, struggling because, again, limited capacity indoors. We're going into, you know, the fall and and uh, patios are going to be maybe a little bit less popular. So it's 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 it, we're looking at the headline numbers, but I think delving deeper into it, there are still a lot of struggles in the retail sector. You, you look at the path, mm -hmm. you know, in the uh, Toronto Underground, they're yeah. seeing the foot traffic virtually non-existent still. Absolutely. Those big office towers are, are, you know, at a fraction of capacity, and that's going to be, you know, the, the tourism industry just yesterday saying, look, the uh, the the workers' subsidy program is coming uh, due. It's going to expire mm -hmm. in December. Great timing. You know, should For that holidays, be extended? Yeah. Should all of these things be extended or, or nuanced or, or shifted to some sort of more of a blanket program? Right. You know, Dave and I were just having that conversation about, you know, th this is this is long term, right? E e like you it said, sure top is. line, those numbers, yeah. we will see those numbers. But behind those numbers, we've seen so yeah. many retailers close their doors. Um, yeah. and, and this is just the beginning, unfortunately. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on those numbers and yeah. uh, we'll break them down for you again. Uh, TikTok on TikTok yeah. this weekend. <laughs> you know, this story has gotten so much publicity, and it doesn't even theoretically affect us uh, here at home because this is the U.S. operations of TikTok that the Trump administration has threatened to ban. And that uh, deadline for the sale of TikTok um, is coming up this weekend. And there is this proposal from Oracle, huge tech company, to, to partner on the U.S. operations of this very popular app. It's the most downloaded app pretty much of, of 2020. But, uh, you know, how much information do they have from the algorithms that make it work? You know, the allegation is that TikTok is being used as a spying conduit. Okay, that's there. And then how do you actually control the information? I, I, <laughs> a, lo a lot of ink has been spilled, so to speak, in the, in the uh, newspaper parlance about, uh, about this deal, which at the end of the day, Will consumers and users of it actually notice a difference unless, you know, on the weekend it goes dark in the U.S.? I mean, that would be quite something, I think. It would be huge. I was I'm just yeah. distracted by that dancing there. Sorry, the people <laughs> that we have pulled. So basically, you're like every every person on TikTok Pretty much. distracted. <laughs> Pretty much, it's so distracting, and you get kind of like pulled into that. the you hole, get, the rabbit it's hole. Like, well, this is interesting, and here's the next thing you know. I just spent 45 minutes. Oh, oh. there it is. It's horrible, horrible. Okay, finally, let's leave things <laughs> off with uh, real estate with real estate numbers. <laughs> the, the numbers, oh. um, Zucasa, uh, one of the uh, real estate uh, companies, uh, talking about the state of of the GTA market, and again, we're 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 hearing about this migration out of the 416 and into the 905 and some record-breaking prices for detached houses in various areas in the suburbs. Um, and yet in all, rental costs downtown are falling on a year-over-year -year comparable. So the market is seeing this uh, certainly a shift. And we talk about, you know, long-term trends, uh, Melanie. I think this is, this is going to be the next thing that is going to continue uh, this week. You know, we heard these signals about record low interest rates for potentially years. So uh, Scotiabank yesterday had a, uh, a, a poll about millennials looking to get into the real estate market. Is it still affordable to do so? Even though prices go up, yeah. you're looking at 
borrowing costs so low that there's that balance. And you look at, okay, what's it cost me to rent versus buying? And if everybody thinks prices are going to go up, guess what? It spirals on itself and, and people get into the market. Indeed. Pushing prices that much higher. Indeed. Uh, so many factors here, Mike. Uh, all right. Yep. It is 620, so we run out of time with you, but oh. we will have a, oh, <laughs> I know. We'll pick it up again on Monday. I know. All right. Have a good weekend. Bye, Mike. It yeah. is always so sad to say goodbye to Mike.